Hi guys, it's Robbie Linus with urbanfarming.com and in today's video I want to cover how we grow our sunflower microgreens. So I'll show you guys step by step how you go from seed right to this tray, you know, of sunflower microgreens you got here that's looking really good. So what I'd recommend is down below we got our microgreen mastery grow guide. You can download it inside there. There'll be a grow guide for you know how to grow sunflower microgreens. And that covers everything, you know, from seeding density to our sanitization process. Basically everything I'm going to cover in this video, I summarized on that guide. So what I'd recommend is, you know, just watch this video and then at the end of it, go download that guide. You know, when you're growing your own sunflower microgreens, you know, you can kind of use our guide as a reference and it should help you a lot. So first thing we got to do is we got to weigh out our seed and then per tray, we do 170 grams. So I'm going to actually do three trays today. So that'll be, you know, 510, 170 times three. There we go, 508. So we got our bucket here, just a standard five gallon bucket. And then it's got this kind of mesh netting in it. And that just helps us do the rinse process. So I'll dump our sunflower seeds in there. And then this made a big difference for us. It's like a, I think it's a clay bird it's called. It just lets us attach a garden hose to a sink. So you can see I can just take this thing off. It's just like a standard sink tap. I can just put this on. It's kind of the only device I could find that let, let us use our, you know, our kitchen sink. For this house we're using kind of as a grow, greenhouse grow house. And then it just snaps on. Move it around with my hands. I just do this to make sure all the seeds are getting, you know, good contact with the water. It's kind of agitating. Take that out. Then you can see, you know, just kind of all the debris that's kind of floating around in there. So you can imagine if you were trying to sanitize your seed, and then it had, you know, all this on your seed. It's just not going to be as an effective kind of sanitization process. So dump that out. Do it once more quick. Come this out. You know how to sanitize your seeds. That's broader practice. They talk about for the volume of your seeds, you want five times the amount of volume of water. So if you have 0.5 of a kilograms of seed, you're going to want 2.5 liters of water. And if you had, you know, one kilogram of seed, you'd want five liters of water. If that makes sense. So that's what we're basing everything off of. So we need 2.5 liters of water. So there's 2.5 liters, 2,000 part per million solution with 12% concentrated bleach of 2.5 liters. We're going to need 44 milliliters of bleach. So I'll add that now. So there's our 44 milliliters right there. So I'll dump that in. We got our sanitization solution here. I'll just dump this in the water or in our bucket. And then we let that sit for 15 minutes. So while you're letting it sit, you know, you don't just want to let it sit like this. You kind of want to be moving it around because you always want to agitating the seeds so they're getting good contact with the sanitization solution. So that's what I'll do. I'll, uh, you know, let this sit for 15 minutes. I'll be moving it around kind of every three to five minutes with my hands just to make sure all the seeds are making good contact with the solution. And then I'll come back once we're done that step and I'll show you guys the rinse we do to remove the sanitized solution and then set it up for our 10 to 12 hour soak or this 8 to 12 hour soak. Hi guys, so we've had our sunflower seeds in the sanitization solution for, you know, 15, it's been a little bit more, probably 18 minutes or so, 15, 18 minutes. But now we've got to rinse them once more. 
you can see just in that 15 minute window how much it's really it kind of looks like a nice tea color it's really colored that water up so I'll empty this step three we got to give our seeds a rinse here just to remove that you know sanitization that film that's probably on the seeds because it was in the sanitization solution so we'll give it a, a rinse so there's a quick rinse on that As you can see you know even that colored the water up quite a bit there so I'll do it once more and then we'll prepare it for the soap you can see why we prefer using these bags I know some people use buckets of holes in them but if you're constantly you know emptying your bucket through little holes you drill through the lid I think it's kind of I think it's a much slower process than just using you know a mesh laundry bag that you can just pull out dump your bucket out that'll be you know our second rinse so that should, should have the seeds good and clean now and now we'll set it up for the soap and then we'll just fill it up with some water you want your water just you know warm you don't want it hot you don't want it cold so that should be good so i hope that makes sense guys it's a little hard to film at times you know just one person holding the camera and showing you guys all the steps but that's how we sanitize our sunflower seed so i'll talk to you guys in 12 to i guess 10 to 12 hours when i show you planting our soaked sunflower seed and hi guys so welcome back it's been about 10 hours i guess we've been soaking our sunflower seeds so now what i'll show you is you know we'll give them that final rinse and then we'll go outside and we'll plant them in our trays and then we'll set them up for the germination phase so here's our sunflowers right now you can just see you know how colored that water is kind of like a really dark iced tea cover for colors and give the sunflowers a quick rinse here kind of get that soap film off them you can imagine there's probably like that iced tea color you know film on all your seeds just always done this stuff so that's basically you know all you do once you're done your soap you just give them a rinse i'll actually give them one more rinse and then i'll empty the seeds in this Kind of our bucket here and then i'll meet you guys outside hi guys so we're all set up you know ready to plant i got our all our sunflower seeds in this bucket here that we emptied out we've rinsed them twice this is the soil we use you know it's just a pro mix soil you can get it canadian tire home depot you know it's available pretty much year round so that's why we use it and i'll show you how we prepare our soil you can see you know it's kind of in some clumps in that so if you had your 10 20 tray you were trying to make a nice flat seed bed to spread your sunflower seeds out on you know it's going to be really difficult to kind of soften it up i guess you know break it up and then make a nice flat bed it's not the easiest to work with so what we do we use this soil sifter and then i'll just run it through with my hands and then you can see you know in here we got this nice just fluffy soil soil tamper you don't need it perfectly level so it's usually pretty quick just kind of get as level as I can we'll take our soil tamper just push it down And you can see how that's really, you know, flattened these beds out, made a nice flat surface for our seeds. The seeds in here that we emptied into the bucket. And then we just use this scooper. You can use any kind of scoop, but for us, I just know it's about kind of three per tray. And then what I do is, I just use our hands and just try to get them as spread out as evenly as you can. This is, you know, kind of what you're, you're looking for there, spread out across your tray. And now what I'll do is I'll, you know, I'll do these next two trays and then I'll show you when we stack them. 
Okay guys, so we got all our seeds spread out and then we just stack them three high. Just want to make sure that, you know, the bottom of this tray is pressing against the soil, not on a lip or anything like that. And then what we do is I'll bring them inside to the grow room and I'll talk to you guys in there. Grow room right now, so crops are all looking really good. With this bottom shelf I'm just using for germination. So we have our three trays right here. You want to make sure you know the bottom of this tray is inside on that tray. And then we just use a 10-20 tray of no holes. And we just use three five, five pound bricks that we have. And we just use these because they were laying around outside when I bought this house. It's used kind of as our gardening microgreen area. So you want to definitely have weights on there. It doesn't have to be bricks. It could be, you know, a phone book or some jugs of water, just anything to push this top tray down. So what's this gonna do is this weight's gonna push your seeds into the soil, which will really help your germination rates. And then it'll also have something to kind of push up against. So you'll get a thicker stem and a stronger microgreen. So that's kind of, you know, everything right now, I guess for day one, this is what our grow room looks like. Our Humidity is 34%, the high was 36, the low was 33. Right now we're 82 degrees Fahrenheit. The high was 97, the low is 82. So what I'll do is I'll, uh, you know, I'll talk to you guys in 24 hours. I'll come back and give you guys an update on the, you know, we'll take the bricks off and then I'll just show you what they look like after 24 hours germinating. So thanks for watching guys and we'll talk to you then. Hi guys, so welcome back. This is our 24 hour update on our sunflower. So they've been germinating for 24 hours now. This is what our grow room looks like. We got a humidity of 36%. The high was 39 and the low was 33. And our temperature is 77 degrees Fahrenheit. The high was 82 and the low is 77 in the last 24 hours. So I'll just take the bricks off. We haven't uh, you know, done anything. We don't miss them or anything like that. I'm just let them sit here. So yeah, that's what she looks like. Starting to germinate a little bit there. You can see they're getting their radicals, but nothing you know too crazy is happening so far. So that'll kind of wrap this 24 hour update up. I'll... Hi guys, so welcome back. This is our 48 hour update. So, you know, the crops, they're looking really good in the grow room. We've had some cooler ambient temperatures. You know, all last week we were kind of at that 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. This week we're, I well, guess today we're at 12, so. Definitely lowered the temperature in our grow room, but our humidity is sitting at 37%. The high was 39, the low was 31. Right now we're at 79 degrees Fahrenheit. The high is 79, the low is 73. So still good temperatures within the grow room, you know, being in those high 70s, but it'll just kind of slow all our germination down. So we'll see what the sunflower looks like. So you can see it's definitely, you know, quite a change from 24 hours to 48 hours. That 24 hour update, we were just starting to see those little radicals and now almost every seed has them. So it's definitely, you know, it looks good. I'm happy with how it looks. There's no mold issues or anything like that. And when we're growing these for our customers, you know, we don't, we don't do anything. I don't come here and mist it or anything like that. I just kind of watch along this line right here and you'll see the sunflowers start kind of creeping out kind of pushing these bricks up they want to be on stack so yeah that's all we'll do i'll uh talk to you guys in another 24 hours for a 72 hour update hi guys so welcome back this is our 72 hour update for, for sunflower microgreens so I'll give you a quick update on the grow room right now we're at 34 percent humidity high was 39 percent low was 32 we're at 91 degrees Fahrenheit, the high was 97, low was 88. So it got pretty hot in here in the last 24 hours. Just take these bricks off. And let's check out what the sunflower looks like. So you can definitely see, you know, quite a change starting to come along. Still got a ways to go, so maybe uh, possibly tomorrow, another 24 hours, to be able to unstack them. So that'll wrap this. It'll be another short little update and I'll talk to you guys in 24 hours and we'll see what it looks like at, I guess the 96 hour update. Thanks for watching guys. Hi guys, so welcome back. This is our 96 hour update for sunflowers. 
Mike Green, so I'll give you a quick update on the grow room. Right now the humidity is 39%. That was the high. The low was 34. We're at 84 degrees Fahrenheit. That was the high and the low was 82. And we'll just take a quick look at our sunflowers. So, you know, you can see they're kind of wanting to come out along the sides here. Take the bricks off and we'll take a look at this tray. So they've definitely, you know, germinated quite a bit in this last 24 hours. See what this other tray looks like. Yeah, they're all, you know, they're all looking pretty good for now. So what I think I'll do is I'm going to leave them for, you know, another 12 hours and I'll come back and I'll film tomorrow and we'll unstack them. And that'll kind of be the, the plan for that. I think a little bit longer will help them. And we should be able to catch them up. I'll put a blackout dome over top of them. We should be able to get them to catch up. So we'll just put our bricks back on. Okay hey guys, so that should wrap this 96 hour up update up. Hi right guys, so welcome back. This would be kind of like a 108 hour update for sunflower. So here's our grow room conditions. Right now it's 37%, the high was 40, low was 32, it's 86 degrees Fahrenheit, the high was 91, the low was 81. And here's our sunflowers. So you know last night I said I'd give them kind of an extra 12 hours to germinate a little more. So you can see they've even, you know, they're really telling us they want out now. I can, we'll take the bricks off and we'll unstack them and then we'll give them a good watering. They look pretty good. Put this tray on the table here. So the problem with these sunflowers that I've been having with this variety is to get them to grow like nice and tall. So what I've been doing is kind of like a blackout phase. So I'll show you guys that once we put them under the lights. It's sunflower for myself has always been it's not so much a difficult crop to grow when you got good seeds, but to get good seeds, you know, it's always been a struggle to kind of find a good variety, but. There's our three trays. Show you, I'll show you guys how we top water them and then how we put them under the lights to kind of stretch them out and get them nice and tall. So I'll get my camera set up and then I'll show you guys that. We've got our three trays set up and then I just, you know, I top water the sunflowers when they first unstack. You want to, I prefer the top watering method because then it always gets the hulls wet. And when the hulls are wet, it's easier for the sunflowers to <clears throat> shed their hulls. So we'll give them a good first watering here. So that'll be good. And now what I'll do is I'll put them on the racks up here. So I'll get my camera set up to give you guys a good view of it. And then I'll show you guys that. Hey guys, so I got my camera set up. So what we ended up doing with this seed variety is we put them, you know, on the top shelf and then we put a blackout kind of just a tray over top of them. So they're just be kind of like bl another blackout period for them for 12 to 24 hours, just cause with this seed variety, I was having trouble to you know, really get them to stretch out and grow nice and tall. So this is something we're doing, I guess, with this specific batch of sunflower seed, but other seeds, we haven't done this and we've been completely fine. So it's something you'll kind of have to play around with, with your seeds, but I'll show you guys how we get it kind of set up now. We got our tray up there. This is just a standard, you know, 10, 20 tray with uh, no holes. And then we just set that on top. Hey guys, so it's really amazing how quickly these sunflowers will push these trays up. So you know this middle one's already pushed up a bit, but you can see these kind of ones on the edges here are laying completely flat on the on the surface. And when we come back, you know, when I give you an update in 12, 24, this would be, I'll do 24 hours, it'll be easier if I do it every morning. So, but you'll be amazed when you see them in the next update, just how much they've pushed that top tray out, like really kind of reaching for the light. So. So that's how we've kind of mitigated some issues of this variety of sunflower seed. It's not something we've always done. Our first batch was sunflower seed was great. Our second batch we really struggled with and this one's kind of average. So we were, you know, everyone says if you find a good batch of sunflower, 
to order a lot of it and it's something I guess once you start growing them you'll you'll learn that it's definitely true it's something you want to do so I guess what I'll do now is I'll just shorten my stand for you guys and then I'll kind of show you how we got our grow room set up for our sunflowers so I'll talk to you guys in a bit okay guys so I got my stand shortened up here give you a quick update of just how we got our grow room set up so for a grow room over your sunflower you're going to want a fan it's you know blowing air over the top of the crop so this fan will be on blowing air over the canopy of our peas and then right now it's just going to be hitting against those trays but eventually that will be the sunflower crop and if you look you know at our grow room you can see we got four fans there so those are all on except for that bottom one when it's in the germination process but those three are always on blowing air this way which then comes to these two fans here blowing air this way which comes to our dehumidifier down here which has an exhaust when it's on which blows the air this way which then blows to that fan and this table it's not usually in here but it was raining yesterday and I had to you know water our peas and show that on camera for another video I'm working on so that's why this table's in here but it's always kind of blowing the air in a circular pattern so it's one thing you want in your grow room is uh, you know really good airflow so you want good airflow over your crops and you want good airflow throughout your whole room will really help kind of prevent mold issues that's a big one you'll also want to have a dehumidifier so that's running 24 7 we used to just have it running so that it would be filling this little you know its little own container but what happened is sometimes it would fill it so fast that and it would get hit, hit like the high level that this would shut down and then our humidity would creep up to you know 70 80 percent and we we're experiencing some mold issues in that so then we got to go into this bucket and that way it never shuts off it just drains the water into this bucket and kind of the next phase of this is what i want is that this will actually be connected to the piping system of the house and then it'll just run like it's kind of a task that we don't have to do that i don't have to worry about draining that bucket i could just let it run and it would run into the you know the drain piping system on the house which would be really nice so so that being said you know if your humidity is high it can lead to potential you know disease and mold issues i don't think you can ever have your humidity too low like even if we got down to 20 percent all that's going to happen is you're going to have to be watering a lot more frequently because the humidity is so low your soil for your microgreens will just be drying out that much quicker so but other than that it'd be you know a really great uh, problem to have out of all the problems so you want a low humidity you want good airflow we're just using these honeywell fans i think what i'll do is i'll just have a link below to a page where all our equipment is because there's quite a bit of equipment we'll be talking about so second thing is you're going to need some grow lights for your sunflowers and i really like these for a couple of reasons i used to have kind of like these big bulky lights and they worked good i mean all the all the lights work pretty well but i didn't like how they hung down so much like all my pictures for my marketing and that you know where all you've seen is the lights where this is you know it's really easy just for your customers not to kind of see your crops like that's what they're focusing on because the, they're not focusing on your big lights so really impressed with those they're relatively cheap i think they're 54 bucks a light or something so it's really not that much and what i really like about them is you know one cord going to the power outlet connects four lights so you can see this is coming from our <clears throat> power outlet below it connects into this light which then comes along and connects into this light which then connects into that light so i've had like my other lights the light here had a power cord the light here had a power cord so like per shelf i had eight cords we're in over now I guess for the two shelves that eight cords where now I only have four so it's you know it's half as many cords it's a lot easier to work with you can see they're plugged into the power unit down there now they're just controlled with this light timer we got so our lights are on a 16 hour on eight hour off cycle they turn on at seven in the morning they turn off at 11 o'clock at night so you got airflow you got lights these shelves we got, we got them from Costco, stainless steel. They're really nice, you know, there's no wood or anything like that. Super easy to clean and sanitize and they should last forever. Yeah, that should, you know, kind of wrap everything up for the sunflowers. So if I was to summarize this video, you know, you want good airflow over the canopy of your crop. You want great airflow throughout your grow room, circling the air around in some sort of fashion. 
you want a dehumidifier and then some lights and you know if you have all those things it should be you should have a lot of success growing microgreens or sunflower microgreens so thanks for watching guys i'll talk to you probably in 24 hours i'll come show you what the sunflowers look like they'll It'll be, so I guess while we're leaving, just remember what these trays look like because it's always amazing when we come back 24 hours from now and see how much they've pushed the trays up. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll talk to you in 24 hours. Hi, guys. So welcome back. This is our day six, 144-hour update for sunflowers. So I'll give you a quick update on the grow room first. We're at 38% humidity. The high was 39. The low was 29. Right now we're at 82 degrees Fahrenheit. The high is was 100 degrees Fahrenheit and low is 79 so I think our humidity is really creeping up because if you can see outside you know it's really raining and that'll I got this window cracked open to bring the heat down a bit but so I imagine our humidity will creep up so you can see look at our sunflowers like just how much they push those trays up like doing this little blackout really helps them stretch out as they're kind of reaching for the light so I mean these two trays were like right on that tray just in 24 hours so and these lights up here we have them on a 16 hours on eight hours off cycle so now what i do is i take these trays off and then we'll give them a good top watering and put them back on the shelf so i'll show you guys that now So we always top water our, you know, our sunflowers. I find it makes a really big difference. If you keep these, like the hulls on the sunflowers wet, just helps them kind of pop them off easier compared to bottom watering. So what I'll do now is I'll, uh, you know, let this water soak in a little bit and then I'll put them back on the shelf and we'll talk to you guys in 24 hours. Hi guys, so welcome back. This is our 168 hour, seven day update for sunflowers. So I'll give you a quick update on the grow room conditions. Right now the humidity is at 70%, the high was 87%, the low was 67%, temperature is 75 degrees Fahrenheit, the high was 82, the low was 72. So I think what happened yesterday is I forgot to you know, turn the dehumidifier back on. Right now it's off because we're filming, but got this window open to kind of bring the humidity down quickly. You can see how much that window's fogged up. And then here's our sunflowers. So they've really greened up. Oops, happy with how they're looking. You know, the soil is still really wet with the humidity being that high and the temperature is lower. You know, it didn't really evaporate that much of the water out of the soil, like the moisture. But I do like to keep the, you know, the sunflowers and the hulls wet. So what I'll do is I'll give them just a really quick top water and I'll show you guys that. Just so the, you know, they're still wet and they can shed their hulls a little easier. So I'll set my camera up and I'll show you guys that. So here's our three trays of sunflower and this one will be you know, just pretty quick. Just try to get the top of the crops all wet. That's kind of all I would do. Just make sure the crop's still nice and wet. Just looking at the crop a little closer. I don't know if I will actually put them under the lights. I'll try to find one to show you. Here's a good one. So hopefully the camera can focus on this. If you can see how it's got this leaf right here. And then this leaf and then these are the true leaves so i'm kind of always watching my sunflower crop and then when i start to see these little leaves forming i'll actually i'll keep them in the grow room so they grow taller but i'll take them take them out from under the lights and i find it kind of prevents these true leaves from forming because they just they get more of like a bitter taste so that's kind of one thing i'm watching for as soon as i see these leaves you know i take them out or i shut the lights off but i need the lights on for a pea crop up there so i'll just move them to a different shelf and they'll have no lights, but they're still, you know, in the heat of the grow room, still growing. So that is what I'll, you know, I'll do now. So I'll just show you guys. I'll just put them on the bottom shelf down here. So they're still getting some light, but I mean, they're not directly under the grow, grow lights. So I'll leave them like that now until we harvest them, which will likely be 24 hours from now. I'll harvest the tray for you guys. So thanks for watching, guys. Hi, guys. So welcome back. We got all our harvesting done for our subscription deliveries. I'll give you a quick update on the grow room. So right now it's 45% humidity. The high was 56. The low was 40. We're at 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The high was 93 and the low was 86. And uh, 
These lights are on 16 hours on, eight hours off. So I'll just uh, get my kind of everything set up and I'll show you guys the harvest process. Hi guys, so welcome back. We've got our sunflowers on the table here. A little bit of a mess because they're underwatered. They're kind of starting to fall over, but they'll be good and dry. We've got our tote and our scale here. So zero that. Then we got two bins here, just because we, you know, we pick our hauls off our product. So I'll show you that. So one thing you can do, you want to just run your hands over them, you know, and that'll knock a lot of those hauls off. So that's one thing you should do, you know, give them a good rub. And then all we do when we harvest, like all our microgreens, we just use a, you know, a knife. There's no scissors or hedge trimmers or anything crazy like that. And we just use a knife sharpener. We actually do this between every tray or after every tray, we'll sharpen our knives and we'll take a handful. And just cut like that. That's you know pretty simple. You want to be watching, making sure you got you know no dirt along the bottom there. It's always what I'm watching that I'm not ripping them out or anything like that. So yeah, what I'll do guys is I'll harvest the rest of this tray and I'll show you our final yield per tray, and then I'll show you how we hand pick our hauls out of there, just so our customers have no hauls on the final product. So. I'll talk to you guys once I got this tray harvested. Okay guys, so I got this tray all harvested here. You can see, you know, it's not definitely not the cleanest job by any means. We were actually, you know, really harvesting a tray. It'd probably take a little more time, but I wanted to make it quick for you guys. And this was our final yield, it was 356 grams. Just to make sure we have no hauls when we're giving them to our customers. And what probably I imagine you'd want to do too, is we just put them in one container. And then you can see, you know, this one has a little haul on it. So we just kind of sort them. If it has a haul on it, like this one's really on there. Like if I turn it, tear it off, it actually came off very nice, but usually you'll damage them. So this leaf's got one on there. Oops. So that's kind of all we do. You know, we just sort it. Just because if you're eating a salad, you know, and if you were to bite down on some sunflower hulls, if you ever eat spits or you know, stuff like that. You'll know what I'm talking about. It's not the most enjoyable thing. So, so I hope you guys, you know, found this valuable. I think it, you know, it's pretty helpful to kind of see the whole rinse, sanitize and soak, and then to plant and germinate, growing it under the lights and now harvesting. So it's pretty simple to harvest. You know, just use a sharp knife and with your hand and then kind of sort, sort them out to get all the holes off. And, you know, make sure you're rubbing them with your hands every now and then just to knock any of those loose hauls off. So if you guys have any questions that I missed or anything, just let me know in the comments below. I'll reply to every one of them. And if there's anything, you know, I'm not doing or could do better to improve my yields on my 10, 20 trays, I'd, you know, gladly hear about what you guys are doing so I can grow my microgreens better. So thanks for watching guys. You know, I appreciate it. if you can give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Every Monday I plan to do like kind of a how to grow blank microgreen it'll be a different uh, variety of microgreen but it'll just i'm sure be helpful so thanks for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video